Hello, baby. Trying something new here? What? It says, could Rich actually play clips on the show? Yeah, I'm going to try. All right. Perfect. Okay. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Simple Minds Sports Show. Robert Kraft uh, puts Belichick on blast, puts him on notice. The, I, don't, the, I don't know if there's enough being made. I know that it's made national headlines. Maybe it, ha- maybe, maybe it is a big enough story, but Robert Kraft basically just called out his head coach. ESPN ran it today uh, in Sports Center. I was watching Sports Center before we started recording, and they brought it up. They were talking about Robert Kraft pretty much giving Bill, like, this is like your objective this year. And if you don't reach it, you're fucking, you could be gone. Do you think, um, so obviously the jettison Brady, he goes, uh, you bring in Cam Newton, you go seven and nine. It's a train wreck. Brady wins the Super Bowl. You spend $163 million in the off season. You draft Mac Jones, you get 10 wins. You go to the playoffs, get your doors blown off. And then this off season, you sit on your fucking hands. Well, don't forget about 2018 either. That's Tom Brady's last year, or 2019, rather, sorry. That was Tom Brady's last year, and they lost the Titans, you know? Yeah, I don't think – I think that that's a little bit of hyperbole for him to talk about that year. Uh, I but think he did that, talk about it. He said we haven't won in uh, three years now. That he's bringing that up, so. I know, but if Brady was here, he wouldn't say that. I think that the last two years are the problem. And my my greater question is not just the last two years, it's this, this off season. And the way, not only the lack of um, uh, movement that Belichick has had in the free agency, which uh, Kraft spoke about, which we can play some things here, but also uh, his coaching staff, which Robert Kraft was asked about specifically. And he sounded like baffled, like literally he's like, what <laughs> his exact quote was something like, you're saying I don't have a coaching staff. And then he kind of caught himself and went on to say, look, Belichick does things a unique way. And anybody that uses unique in that situation is just saying they don't know how to explain it. It's fucking dumb. Um, and uh, hopefully it works because I'm uh, results oriented. It's like so, when your in-laws, that's like when your in-laws come over and your wife explains why you're on the couch. Well, he had a rough <laughs> night and, you know, don't don't really want to yeah. say he's a fucking degenerate asshole alcoholic. Yeah, no, he might. Uh, yeah. He might. I think his stomach's hurting him. Let me see if I can do this right. Tell me if you can see what I'm about to play. A little yep. Robert Kraft here. Yeah. All right. Let's play it. Uh, here's what I, here's, I got a couple here. Here's some here's first words from Robert Kraft. After my family, there's nothing more important to me than the New England Patriots and, and football games. That's my passion. So whatever I can do, hopefully in a small way, to make that happen, I'm here. Uh, I'm not happy that we haven't won a playoff game in three years. So I think about that a lot. How about that? Right there, right there in your face. I'm not happy we haven't won a playoff game in three years. I think about that a lot. Is that not pulling, putting his head coach completely on blast? I mean, what, if you went to your job and they said, you know, I haven't been happy with your performance in the last three years, what would you take that as? Oh, shit, I'm on the hot seat. I need to fucking <laughs> get my shit together and get to that where my boss would be happy with me right now. That is what that sounded like right there. Yeah, 100%. And uh, I think it's a fact that Robert Kraft – since he's owned the Patriots has not gone four years without making, without winning a playoff game. Yeah. So that's on the agenda right there as well. All right. Let's keep, uh, let's see if I can continue to make this work. You see Robert. I see Robert. Ah, look at me. All right. Go ahead. Speak up, Robert. Oh, I don't want Tamara. Tamara. Tamara Brown. You might be a good guest, but not right now. I go back to Oh one. Uh, we definitely didn't have the best headlines, the best talent, but we had the best team. And and they came together. And that taught me a lot that the chemistry of what goes on, no matter, uh, and the intellect of the people you come in and who have to understand your system, just because a guy has a record over here that goes to another place doesn't ensure success. But we'll see. I think Bill has a unique way of doing things. Uh, it's worked out pretty well up to now. So uh, 
I, I know what I don't know. And I try to stay out of the way of things I don't know. I think he's pretty good. With over 40 years of experience doing it. So it, it doesn't sometimes look straight line to our fans and, or to myself, but I'm results oriented. God, I just made myself a lot of editing. Um, straight line. <laughs> That's not a straight line process for Mr. Bill Belichick does things in unique ways. We just touched on it. Look, I, I, don't, I don't know how else you want to take these comments from Robert Kraft other than, you know, he is, he's look results oriented. He wants a win in the playoffs. It's the, with the result that he is giving right now is that I chose the wrong person. I should have kept Tom over Bill. Do you think it's that? Uh, like, I don't think anything's black and white. And I certainly don't, I certainly don't think this one's black and white, but you can feel the remorse. Do you think he's all the way there? Like, do you, I don't think that the relationship between Kraft and Belichick is broken. Nah. But they, but they together decided to let Brady walk. Kraft, Kraft can't. No, but he put will. all the blame on Bill. It's he his. Well, he's trying to. Let yeah. me see. Let me see if I can uh, pull up that. I want to get to that draft question. He's trying to, and um. He's trying to on the on the playoff stuff, on the draft he's playing, stuff. He's playing it like I'm just the owner. I just sign the checks. I don't really go. I let Bill do whatever he wants to do. That's what I'm taking from this whole interview. There's just two that- things about that, Robert. Number one is you let Brady walk. You could have mm-hmm. paid him. You could have overrode Belichick and paid Brady and gave him what he wanted. And maybe Belichick walks, maybe he doesn't. I bet you he doesn't. People think that he's a stubborn mule and would have I bet you he stays. He's pretty fucking comfortable in Nantucket. Mm-hmm. And also, you your point, Ray, you write the checks. You wrote 163 million of them last year, and you've wrote none of them this year. That's on you, bud. That's on you, Robert. Yeah. All right? So we know uh, that they are right in the middle of the pack in terms of cash spent on their players or in the NFL, on the NFL teams. Not in cap, but in actual money given. And I had this thought the other day that uh, I think it was Andrew Callahan wrote that thing in the Herald about the Patriots setting up themselves for next year with 103 million in cap yeah. space. Yeah. You can push, look, you can sign so, like the Browns just did it. They're paying Deshaun Watson $1 million this year. He's owed and, 230 million. Yeah. You can sign a guy this year and put his cap space on next year. Yeah. You just got to pay him a little bit of cash. You, you can go up there and sign coaches too. You know, you can go sign some offensive coordinators and know what the fuck they're doing. You can find hey, fucking hey, Billy O'Brien. Uh, yeah, they I don't mean, count on the cap, but you got to pay them. Yeah. And hey, how about instead of paying twenty million dollars to Belichick as a coach, let's give ten of that to Russell Gage as a wide receiver. How about that? How nice. about that? If he can't coach up these fucking guys, how about you start losing it out of your check, Bill? So I think that's what he's kind of talking about here. But don't let him off the the hook too much. Don't let Robert craft off the hook too much because he's not paying the cash this year that uh and you know and he let brady walk just as much as belichick let brady walk so remember that people i don't have the draft quote uh the draft clip here but uh, shit sorry he talks about the draft and he talks about having to have a good draft this year and uh specifically says we have not had we didn't have a good draft the four years prior last year we had a good draft and then he says well, he, what he says is he tries to say we had a good draft and he catches himself and says the staff had a good draft and did a j- good job. He's giving himself credit for taking power away from Belichick last year, giving it to Dave oh, Ziegler sh- and his staff and, t- and saying to the media indirectly to Bill, your, fir- your last four years were trash. I stepped in and we've had a good draft. Yep. And which... That's obvious to me. You can disagree if you want. My question is, does that mean that Robert Kraft is stepping in again this year and letting Elliot Wolf and those guys uh, do their work? Or is it saying, all right, Bill, I did. I did my draft for this for last year and it was good. We got good guys. Mac Jones, Madre Stevenson, uh, Barmore. Now, now it's back in your hands this year. You better have a good fucking draft, dude. You better have a good draft. 
Because you'll be able to tell. Playoff game in three years, and you haven't drafted fucking well until I put my foot in the door. But you'll be able to know because if the Patriots uh, trade out of the first round, then you know Bill's back in the driver's seat. That's a good. That's thing. that's that's how you'll know if Bill's back in the. This is my draft. I'm going to do things my way. That's kind of a good. Uh, yeah, it's a good point. All right, you want to end on a positive note? You want to hear what Robert had to say about Mac? I'd love to. I'd love oh, to. Okay, let's try and do this. Here's here's Bill Craft uh, on Mac Jones. Like he's, I come in there sometimes on the weekend or just there working out, watching film, just doing things that I wouldn't believe someone of his background would have that kind of commitment given his past. And the guys in the locker room really like him, all the guys. You know, he's he's just and you know, I actually believe he has a little more edge than seen. But he's been respectful of coming in as a rookie. So I'm very high on him. And I think we really uh staff did a great job drafting him. Uh, we're lucky to have him for our future. That was a little bit of the cut I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. We really did a good, the staff did a really good job drafting him. Do you hear that? Oh, yeah. Should we replay that? Sure. I think we really, uh, the staff did a great job. What's that? What's that, Robert? The staff did a great job. Oh, is it the staff? I think we really, uh, the staff. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the staff. <laughs> the staff. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> the staff did yeah, yeah no yeah. you so had we, no we, no you had staff. absolutely no part in mac jones coming to the patriots nope uh-uh. not him <laughs> that's that i mean i don't know shots fired is it gonna end all right so what what's what do we think if uh belichick goes out there so look he they're they're right now looking at a potential third place finish in the division missing the playoffs um you know, worst case scenario, falling under 500, possibly drastically under 500. I don't think that's going to happen. I actually, I'm on the, on the side of things that Mac Jones is going to be really good. I think Mac Jones is going to have a really good year. You're um, positive. You're a positive energy kind of guy right now. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not in my nature. I just, I just have a little bit of a gut feeling that that offense is going to, tick up because of Mac Jones. I do have faith in Mac Jones. I do. I think he's a heady guy that can uh, run this offense. Maybe Joe judge and Matt Patricia drag him down. That's, that's a possibility. Um, but if, if they do, if they miss the playoffs, if they get blown out in the, let's say they miss the playoffs. Let's say they have an okay year, but miss the playoffs. Where What's does an okay that... year? What's an okay year? I need, I need a record. Uh, I don't know. Nine and nine and eight, nine and eight. And, uh, Missed the playoffs. But where are you in the AFC East? Second or third? Second. Okay, so the Dolphins didn't make it in before you? No. Positive year. A positive year. But what everyone else what everyone else did around the AFC, and if you go nine and eight above five hundred, is Kraft looking at it that way? I think so. I think he would. I disagree. I think he wants a playoff win. I think since I gave you $163 million last year, go get a fucking playoff win. I pay you $20 million a year to make up for a shitty roster and your stupid coaching decisions. Go get a playoff win. Draft no, a guy I, top 15, go get a fucking playoff win. I don't think that's in the cards this year. And I think he, but I think, I think Robert needs to be realistic on the fact that they didn't go out and spend any money. I mean, the biggest signing we had is Jabil, Jabil Peppers. I got to get that right before headlines, but yeah. Uh, they, that's the big signing, and it's a one-year deal. That's nothing to write home about. Yeah, they didn't sign shit, and they <laughs> let people and they let people walk. Um, but they they you know they spent money last year. I look that was last what, year. That's not this year. Whether I mean, it was, whether Robert thinks that or Bill thinks that, I think you can't take a step back for Mac Jones for the Patriots. You can't take a step back. So even if even if that means nine and eight, and it and it was a better nine and eight than ten and seven this year. I can look, you know, it'll, it'll be quote unquote craft results oriented. Let me see what that nine and eight looks like. Yeah, of course. Um, and if you miss the playoffs, but no, I think like you have to continue making steps forward with this team and Mac Jones, you can't take a step back. 
and wait to load up again next year. Like you have to continue making steps forward. You can't be an eight win, seven win, six win team. That's out of the question. You, I mean, that's, I gave you the basement level of success. You yeah. have to be nine, 10, 11 wins, knocking on the door of the playoffs, knocking on the door of a win. That's, that's where you need to be. You have to be making the strides forward. Yeah. And Robert Kraft just played that. Right